And today, as usual, Darren Farwell is here. And last time, Darren, you were here, we had uh, a discussion about life insurance. And you had more than one reason. I think it was five reasons that we should take life insurance. What do you have for us today? Well, I'm going to talk about those five. I'm going to follow up on the story that we had about Randy today. But uh, I want to get at another reason for being excited, and that is the Leafs might be on their way to the playoffs. So keep our fingers crossed about that one. You're such a sports addict. Now, the, the last time we talked, we shared happy stories. I was talking about an old client of mine, Randy, and his neighbor. Randy's neighbor is retired, very well-to-do, doesn't have any debt, and his kids are doing very well on his own. Yet his neighbor was buying life insurance, and Randy just couldn't figure out why the heck he would need life insurance. In our annual review with Randy and I, I gave Randy some ideas about why his neighbor might have been buying life insurance at his stage in life. As I explained, in my experience, there are five reasons to consider buying life insurance. Number one, to cover the risk of loss if one of the breadwinners was to pass away and then who's going to make the money? So the most common example, of course, is one spouse makes most of the money. If that spouse dies, who's paying the bills? So life insurance covers that risk. Number two, to provide a minimum legacy for beneficiaries. I hear some parents say, we're going to spend all the money while we're alive. But at the same time, they may want a minimum legacy left over for for their children. So they may decide to leave a $500,000 life insurance policy. So if they spend everything there's still money for their their beneficiaries. Number three, life insurance provides a fast, easy, tax-efficient way to cover estate taxes. Number four, life insurance is a low-risk, tax-effective investment in its own right. You can earn higher rates of return on a life insurance policy than you can on bonds and GICs, for example. And number five, The tax deductibility of life insurance can make it a tax-smart way to leave significant funds to charity and other causes. Those are the five reasons you were talking about, Marilyn. Well, because I started off before you discussed this last time, thinking there was only one, which was to leave some money after you pass. Five is very much an increase. I only knew 20%. You've increased my mind capacity by... 80%. 80%. Well, frankly, Marilyn, when I, when I started in the, in the business in 1986, I almost never spoke about life insurance. And if I did, it was about covering risk of loss. But over the years, with interest rates going so much lower, and life insurance is an investment compounds tax-free, with insurance rates going lower and people changing and thinking about their estate as opposed to growing their investments, life insurance is a very popular part of regular discussion. And the other thing is I always thought that someone like yourself who's a wealth manager or advisor would be telling people about where to invest their money to make money. So life insurance never came into it, but I noticed number four is investment rates, returns are better than on GICs. I'm listening, you see, and learning. And the tax deductibility, and you're all about tax efficiently. What's that saying you always say? It's It's not not what you make, it's what you keep. Thank you very much. Yeah. So... What, where are, is Randy? Is he buying life insurance? Well, uh, he may. After Randy and I discussed these objectives for insurance, he said he was going to speak to his wife and see whether those any of those objectives were you know right for them. But if he could, he was going to speak to his neighbor the next time about <laughs> insurance, but this time with a little knowledge under his belt. And in fact, Randy called me on Tuesday. He had spoken to his neighbor, and that's what our happy story is today. Mr. Neighbor's objective was, in fact, number three. Life insurance provides a fast, easy, tax-efficient way to cover estate taxes. It's a classic case. Mr. Neighbor has a family cottage. The cottage was passed to him by his parents. The book value of their cottage, with all the capital improvements and the $500,000 lifetime capital gains exemption that was done way back when, is now $450,000. According to their tax survey, the value of the cottage is $980,000. Their kids, the neighbor's kids, want to keep the cottage after their parents' death. But watch the math here. If by some accident the parents die suddenly, the cottage is deemed sold for tax purposes immediately. Whether they sell it or not, for tax purposes, it's deemed sold. So here's the math. 
cost was 450, the value is 980, the capital gain is 530,000. So there's $265,000 worth of tax owing by the estate on the estate return and most often before the estate is fully settled. The kids don't want to have to settle, sell the cottage to pay the tax. So Mr. and Mrs. Neighbor bought a joint last to die life insurance policy for 400,000. On death of the second parent, 400,000 is paid quickly and easily to the kids from which they can pay not only the cottage tax, but other taxes or whatever costs they might have. So that's why they bought the life insurance was to cover that tax liability. Now, of course, they don't need to do that. There are other things that they could do. But I guess what the neighbor had done is they'd looked at what the different options are, thought about the pros and cons, realized they could easily afford it. And according to Randy, Mr. Neighbor said he was just happy he knew the kids wouldn't have to worry about it. What a nice man. And what a nice story. And I, whenever I hear you speak, the one thing I realize is how little I know about your world. And I, I get that feedback from our listeners. It's about educating ourselves. We can't make decisions based on things that we don't see or know. And sometimes we have a little narrow map of our neighborhood and we really don't know what lies outside of our boundaries. And I think you take us outside our boundaries. So thank you for that. You're welcome. I know even sitting in the studio here with when we're talking amongst each other, you always end up hearing about something you didn't know before. And in my opinion, it makes great sense to investigate all the alternatives and just pick the one that suits your particular circumstances and your comfort. So if someone wishes to explore the possibilities, are you going to work today? I'm not going to work today. I'm going to visit some pens and play a Warhammer 40k tournament. What is that? Well, that's another, that's another day on the radio, Mary. Okay, so if anyone wants to speak to you, it has to be Monday, but we'll give out your number, and will you still pay parking and buy uh, coffee? Uh, parking and coffee is always provided, Marilyn. So if you wish to speak to Darren, you'll have to wait till Monday, but you can leave a message because we're going to give you his number. It's 416-863-7501. That's 416-863-7501. You don't know what you don't know, and it doesn't hurt you to know and expand your horizons. The one thing uh, I learned yesterday from Joanne from the Alzheimer's Society is that we need to expand our horizons and keep our minds working, take different paths than we usually ta take so that dementia and Alzheimer can be uh, prevented somewhat. So do explore possibilities, do reach out to experts, do ask questions, and make your brain work. Then your decisions will be ones based on information and you won't have any if onlys. If only I'd known this. If only I'd known that. So 416-863-7501 and when it comes to investing your money, there won't be any if onlys because Darren Farwell and his team at Scotia Wealth Management will have given you the information so you can make the right decisions for yourself. Thank you, Darren. You're welcome. Have a nice weekend, Marilyn.